In this video, you are gonna learn which vitamins and minerals support each phase of your cycle. But before we dive in, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also make sure to click that bell to be notified every time I post a new video on menstrual cycle health and fitness. And if you don't know me yet, my name's Omega Zimpano. I am an exercise scientist and menstrual cycle educator, and I have helped so many women take the guesswork out of the nutrition part so that they can feel confident and nourishing themselves in each phase of the cycle. We will start with the bleed phase. In this phase, a lot of our nutritional habits can be focused on replenishing. A lot of my clients report that their appetite is a little suppressed in the bleed phase. We lose about a milligram and a half of iron, depending how heavy we bleed, during each menstrual phase. So it's important that we really get that back so that our energy levels can be on par and up there because if we don't get enough iron then we might suffer in terms of energy. Sources of iron include red meat, bone broth, eggs, spinach, black beans, and lentils and I do have a resource for you at the end of this video. Now let's move on to vitamin C. Vitamin C is another thing that many people actually need to help absorb iron. Also keep in mind that vitamin C is destroyed by heat and air. So getting our vitamin C as fresh and as raw as possible is always, always, always a good idea. So sources of vitamin C include sweet bell peppers, which are my favorite, strawberries, okay, also a close favorite, kale, parsley, collards, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and citrus fruit. Omega-3s is another thing that can help reduce period pain and overall inflammation in our body. So if you're the type of person that gets headaches or diarrhea or cramps, supplementing with omega-3s and even just having enough omega-3s in the diet is crucial. So eating foods like flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, salmon, and free range eggs are going to be great in this phase of your cycle. Now let's move on to the follicular phase. So foods in this phase should support estrogen and testosterone because those are the two hormones that are rising that are going to support you in developing a healthy follicle, having a healthy ovulation, and then having a very healthy come down in your luteal phase. So two antioxidants have been shown to support follicle growth. The first one is vitamin A slash retinol. And a study by Mumford and colleagues showed that vitamin A was associated with higher levels of estrogen and testosterone. Foods high in vitamin A include grass-fed beef liver, not my fave, but it is a high source, chili peppers, dandelion root, also a winner, carrot and dried apricots. Likewise, in the same study, the authors showed that atosorferol or vitamin E, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is also associated with higher levels of estrogen and testosterone as well. So foods high in vitamin E include wheat germ oil, sunflower seeds, almonds, wheat germ, spinach, and dried prunes. Now the thing that actually supports estrogen and testosterone rising is follicular stimulating hormone. Not surprising, that helps stimulate follicle growth. A 2018 study by Kim K and colleagues also showed that sodium in amounts under 1500 milligrams have been associated with higher follicular stimulating hormone. Last one I'll mention for the follicular phase are phytoestrogens. So phytoestrogens also help support a healthy rise of estrogen. So foods high in phytoestrogens are garbanzo beans, soy, not surprising, right? Tempeh, edamame, miso, grains, garlic, sprouts, all of those support estrogen and the healthy rise of it. If you're getting something out of this video so far, go ahead and click that like button and we'll continue on to the ovulatory phase. So some metabolic characteristics of the ovulatory phase include a lower metabolism. That's right, a decreased metabolism in the ovulatory phase. So you might not be as hungry in the ovulatory phase, but obviously getting nutrients is still very, very important. So eating light foods can really support you. Those are vegetables and whole grains and generally balancing your blood sugar just by eating every two to three hours, not going super long to eat, is going to support you in this phase. Also, this is where fiber becomes super, super important because in the luteal phase, that fiber is going to help us detox estrogen. So your body is preparing to do that. So make sure that you eat enough 
fiber in this phase of your cycle. Zinc is another thing that actually not only supports the skin, but also supports testosterone. Because your testosterone is highest in this phase of your cycle, zinc is going to support you in having healthy testosterone, and it's going to maybe even support you taking care of some of that premenstrual acne before it happens too. Foods high in zinc include oysters, pumpkin seeds, ginger root, oats, almonds, and pecans. Let's talk about magnesium really quick and vitamin C because those are two nutrients that are easily depleted from our body in times of stress. And so getting enough magnesium and vitamin C are going to support you in this phase of your cycle. So we already talked about vitamin C sources in the bleed phase. Now we'll talk about magnesium sources for this phase. Foods high in magnesium include kelp, almonds, cashews, molasses, and buckwheat. And now we'll transition to talk about the luteal phase. In the luteal phase, most of us experience some sort of PMS symptom, whether it's breast tenderness, water retention, mood changes, cramps, or gut distress, it happens and it's okay. So foods in this phase should support th those PMS symptoms that arise. So I'm gonna talk about each PMS symptom briefly and talk about foods, vitamins, and minerals that can support that. All right, so mood management is really important and vitamin D actually supports our mood. So in a 2018 study by Draper and colleagues, they showed that vitamin D is actually metabolized really quickly in this phase of our cycle, meaning that our body uses it. So we actually need to replenish with it a little bit more. So sources of vitamin D include salmon, mackerel, and cod liver oil. So these types of foods can be used as a food preventative tool to help stave off symptoms like anxiety, depression, and mood changes. Keep in mind that if you are somebody that has been diagnosed with PMDD, you might need a little bit more help than just the nutrition side. B6 is also a vitamin that can support our mood. So sources of B6 include sunflower seeds, lentils, buckwheat, and brown rice. Vitamin B1 is also essential for mood management. So make sure you get sunflower seeds, pinto beans, oatmeal, wild rice, and cashews. Now let's talk about protein. So the same study that I mentioned earlier by Draper et al. showed that we metabolize a lot of protein in this phase of our cycle. So it is super, super important that we get enough protein either by supplementing amino acids, I'll put my favorite amino acids down below, or by getting just enough animal protein, or if you are vegan or vegetarian, doing protein combination. Potassium is one that I like taking because I get sore boobs. So potassium helps reduce water retention that we have in this phase of our cycle. High sources of potassium include asparagus, avocado, raw carrot, lima beans, potato, tomatoes, and bananas. So if you are somebody that deals with any type of water retention in this phase of your cycle, eating high potassium foods can help reduce that by increasing your overall potassium and helping you excrete that sodium. If you're looking for the easiest way to get the right nutrients in each phase of your cycle and totally take the headache out, make sure to download my cyclical recipe book and grocery list to help guide your eating habits. This is not a diet. These are suggestions that are research-based to help you maintain hormonal balance at each phase of your cycle. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you're curious about addressing your cravings, make sure to check out this video next. I'll see you in there. Bye.